IT66 and as one of the team of DJs on BBC Radio 1 when it launched in 1967. He also worked on Lexi 208. In 1976, he joined Capital Radio. Moving to Kent in 1984, he was part of the launch team at Invicta Radio. Diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in his 60s, Johnson continued to appear at offshore radio reunions, including the Pirate Radio Essex broadcast in 2004 and 2007. Paul Harris from Albion in Scotland passed away. Paul radio book called When Pirates Ruled the Waves. Paul got involved with the International Broadcaster Society run by Tim Thompson. Paul was key to finding a suitably high power transmitter and arranged to pick up lots of equipment previously used by Radio 270. Launched in 1970, Capital Radio aired mainly. One of Paul's books tells the inside story of the station and its trials, called To Be a Pirate King. It is rarely found available these days. passed away after a hard-fought battle with cancer. Robin was a fan of the 60s offshore stations and was lucky enough to visit Radio 390's Red Sandsport in 1967. In August 73, he moved to Radio Naughty International, where he changed his name to Robin Banks. He stayed with Karen until it closed down the following year and then worked aboard the ship, the Evo 2, preparing her for a planned feature at Radio Nova International. He also worked on the Voice of Peace, the extra station, the coast of the crowd, before returning to the Nevo 2, which by this time had been sold to the Libyan government. Robin spent some time on the Nevo looking after the technical side. Some of you might remember occasional short wave tests, mainly in 1977, featuring familiar voices of pieces on 605 kilohertz, emanating from the Nebo 2, then anchored in the Tripoli hub. This program was broadcast from the ship when Robin and Chris hosted an hour-long show on the anniversary of the British MOA. In the 80s, he worked as a transmitter engineer in Ireland and was involved briefly in the early days of Laser 558. Robin has installed dozens of TV and radio stations in Central America, North Africa, and in the Middle East. He was also one of the leading lights of the campaign to preserve Red Sands Forks, Project Red Sands.